Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us. This is the June 12, 2014 work session of the East Fishfield Town Board. Would you please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. You might notice one seat is empty as we speak. Uh, Councilman Delisandro has called, said it'll be a couple minutes late. He's, 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 he's been detained and there's no way he can get around it. So he'll be right with us. Uh, that being said, we will start the town board, uh, the uh, town board work session. A work session is a session of the town board that's held. So members of the town board can all meet as a group and discuss matters of importance to the town. So that being said, uh, supervisor's announcements, I did want to make a point. Uh, Reese, uh, last week I attended a fire district inspection dinner along with Councilman D'Alessandro and uh, I just want to compliment our fire people. Uh, as they put it, it's four companies, one family uh, made up of Hopewell Hose, uh, Wikipedia Fire, Stormville Fire and Hillside Lake. And uh, when you see everybody together and they give presentations and awards for hours served, um, incidences that have been answered and and things of that nature. Councilman's here. Councilman, sorry. thank you very much. No, I said you were you were, you were detained. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, apologize. Not a problem. Not a problem. Glad that you'd be here. Um, I was just saying about the inspection dinner we attended last week. Very nice it was. Firemen uh, did an excellent job. The fire company does a great job, and when they, they hand out awards for our, like I said, hours served, um, different incidences that they responded to, the four fire companies really work together very well. And, uh, and when you see them, they just, they're like a big family. And uh, I just want to congratulate them. And I did want to mention that last year I took the report that they had there. Um, our four fire companies responded to a total of over 2,000 alarms in 2013. Uh, they do a great job. They're volunteers. Uh, and they're the best professionals in the business. So I'd like to thank them very much. They do an excellent job. So. That was my announcement for tonight. I really don't have anything else to announce. So uh, with that, the next item on the agenda is gonna be financial presentation. Uh, being June is middle of the year, typically we try to have a financial um, discussion or presentation to see where we are in the budget and how things are going. Uh, coincidentally, we just had a review by Moody's Investment Services uh, to review our bond rating. And, that's kind of a grueling uh, uh, task. They, they look at everything. They, they uh, as Moody's does, they're very critical of everything. But um, I'd like to say that we came out with a double A2 rating, which is the highest of any town in Dutchess County. Uh, but again, it's, uh, it's very good to know about our finances. So we have this presentation in June. So Mark, our controller, is going to do the presentation. And Mark, I'll shut off one of the lights so the screen shows up a little bit better. OK, thank you, John. So as um, Supervisor Hickman alluded to, uh, we just recently had a uh, Moody's update. Uh, they confirmed our AA2 rating, which is, as the Supervisor mentioned, the highest uh, in Dutchess County, tied with the county itself and one other town. They, the only other change, or the change was that they assigned a negative outlook. Um, but this is not as bad as it sounds. I'll go into more detail in a minute. So what is the rating system? Uh, Moody's and Standard & Poor are the two major uh, raters of municipalities. Uh, AAA is the highest rating. That's reserved for uh, the United States government. Uh, I think New York, the United States government has knocked down one notch, They were on though. Standard & Poor's, but uh, Moody, oh, Moody's kept Moody's there. Kept but when you can print your own money, it's easy to pay back your <laughs> debt. <laughs> um, so we... As a AA2 rated municipality, it's the third highest possible rating. Uh, realistically speaking, I think it's the, the highest rating we could ever achieve for a town this size. So we're very proud of that. Um, moving down to A, there's subcategories within each of these. That's the AA123, A123. As you move down the chart, you become more of a credit risk. Um, so if we were to be uh, downgraded, we would likely be downgraded from a AA2 to a AA3, 
which is still a fantastic rating. And that's what the negative outlook is alluding to, that in the next two years, based on all the circumstances surrounding the town's finances and circumstances, that it's possible they would consider um, a downgrade. What does the rating mean to us? Uh, high rating, which we have, means low interest rates. Uh, the historical average difference between AA2, our rating, and BAA2, which is you know, some of the other um, towns in the area, would be 93 basis points. So if we were to be eligible to borrow at 3%, that same loan might cost another town 3.93%. Um, just to the BAA, when you get down to the Cs, you're talking about probably a 7 or 8 percentage swing. But Mark, I'd like to point out that if we went from, and I really, we don't have any plans of going from AA2 to AA3, would that, that would not change our interest rate, correct? Uh, a would very it, unlikely or very minimal, more, minimal yeah, amount, yeah. right? And the last point on this slide would be, of course, we don't want to drop to AA3, um, but it would very likely have no practical impact. It would just get us closer to the next step down is really mm -hmm, the only mm -hmm. impact it would have. And we would still be more highly rated than all but one town in Dutchess County. So why the negative outlook? Uh, there's three primary reasons. One is a concern about IBM leaving. Uh, we don't have any control over that, but it would affect the town and affect the town's ability to pay debt as Moody sees it. Um, so that's one of the reasons why they say in the future it's possible we could be downgraded. The second thing is declining fund balance. Uh, over the last four or five years, there's been a steady drawdown of our fund balance. That's largely been a conscious decision by the town because of the negative um, economy, economic environment yeah. that we find ourselves in. Uh, we could have either cut services, raised taxes significantly, or drawn down some of our fund balance. We had a very significant fund balance, so that was the choice we made. Mm -hmm. um, as time has moved on, it's a choice that we won't continue we, to make. We will not continue to make that choice in the future. And, I, and one of the things I have to point out, and this is what Moody's doesn't see, what we see on the town level, is we're talking about people. You know, so Moody's would say, well, just raise taxes or, or just increase your water revenues. Well, that's, that's easy for them to say, but when you're here sending out the bills and you're getting the calls and you know the people that maybe been out of work for a while, that's really not a decision we like to take. And I think, you know, if I may speak on this, Mark, we never like to do anything, um, like if we move our rates up, say the water rates, which absolutely they need to be adjusted up, but we'll not do that in one fell swoop. We try to take it incrementally so everybody can adjust because everybody is still hurting from this this deepest recession in history. And this is another thing that I was a little bit unhappy that Moody's did not really seem to realize we're not really out of the greatest recession in history yet. And so there are still issues out there. But we look at it from the people point of view and Moody's is just like, oh, this is a problem. So that's where, but I agree with you. This. Is, Drawing down a fund balance is not going to continue. Right. And I think we've been very diligent in, in taking care of our fund balance. Well, and to be clear, they are still okay with our fund balance at mm -hmm. this point. That's why they uh, confirmed the AA2 rating. Yeah. Um, they're just saying if it keeps going, yeah. it could be a problem. And that's the, they're, they're projecting forward. Um, the third point, I would have to say I disagree with them on this, but it's their, uh, you know, their, Methodology isn't necessarily the methodology I would use, but they also blamed a declining tax base. Uh, I don't, of course, housing prices across the country have declined over the past, uh, but that particular fact hasn't negatively infected the town of East Fishkill any differently than um, any, other town, any other town. What I would have looked for if I had been them were high levels of um, defaults and mm -hmm. mortgages on, and uh, an exodus of, of people from the community, and we haven't seen that. So, But it's in there, so I mention it. General fund, looking back at 2013, our revenues were just over 11 million and our expenditures just over 12 million, resulting in an operating deficit of about a million dollars. So this is what we're talking about when we say drawing down fund balance. Um, if our revenues are less than our expenditures, it, it the difference comes from fund balance. So we began the year 
with approximately 3.25 million in general fund of unrestricted fund balance. We drew it down by a million dollars and we ended the year at 2.25 million. Mark, may I stop you here? Why are we having a deficit of a million dollars? It's a complicated answer. I'll address some of it. Briefly. Um, loss of revenues, primarily. Um, a few uh, one-off well, expenditures. If I may, Mark, I think you're going to see that we, we've seen, um, say, mortgage taxes that were $2.5 million a year at their peak. They're now about $900,000 a year. So when you speak, we've had declining revenues of the sales taxes, the mortgage taxes, and unfortunately, the governor's decided it is infinite wisdom to cap our our, 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 our ability to increase taxes above 2%. So you see that. You see also the pension increases have gone from uh, $680,000 in 2009 to over $1.7 million this year. Uh, the fuel's doubled just about, well, it hasn't doubled. Fuel's gone up. And we've talked about this many, many times. It's easy to see when all these things are going up and your revenues are going down, that's how come you have such a such a deficit as we've had. Can I ask, Mark, if our sales tax weren't capped by the county, what would that number deficit be? Right. We lost about $300,000 per year yeah. with the – with they created a new sales tax allocation. In the very first year it went into effect, we lost $300,000. So there's – All know, these – all these factors. That's a, port, a part of it, and there's mm -hmm. a, a number of parts. And as I said, I'll go through some of them as the – presentation goes on. If you have more questions after that, then I'll, I'll try to address them. Uh, the importance of fund balance, I've presented this slide before. Uh, it enables the town to make uh, payments early in the year before we've recognized our significant revenues. Allows us to avoid tax spikes in years when we uh, know expenditures will be unusually high, one-off events and to buffer the town against unexpected drops in revenues, which, again, there's a number of things beyond our control uh, and beyond our ability to forecast, so fund balance fills in those gaps. The state has um, an unofficial recommendation of 15 to 25 percent. That's up. They used to say 10 to 15 percent. If we applied that to East Fishkill, they'd say our ideal fund balance would be between 1.7 and 2.9 million. Uh, I have a different standard. I'd like to see it between 2.8 and 3.5. Um, so we're a little below where I'd like it to be, but we're still above where the state thinks we should be. And the goal for 2005 would be to appropriate nothing in fund balance. So this is, I think, one of the most powerful uh, slides in the presentation. It shows our spending over the last four years, five years, if you include 2014, which is that it's essentially been flat. These look like simple lines, but really they're made up of a bunch of different expenditures, some skyrocketing. As the supervisor mentioned, our pension costs have gone up in this time period by over a million dollars per year. So pension expenses go up a million dollars, but we've been able to hold uh, spending flat. Health insurance costs have gone up $500,000 per <laughs> year in this, um, so you know, 2009 versus 2014 or 13. Um, so every dollar increase that we've experienced, we've been able to find an offset somewhere else. And I'll go through some of those offsets. Gas prices have doubled. Um, utility prices are going up. There's, everything seems to be working against us in terms of uh, increasing cost. At the same time, over roughly the same period, uh, these are two significant um, sources of revenue that have declined significantly. Interest back in 2007 was almost $350,000. Last year, it was about $8,000. Um, mortgage tax, as the supervisor mentioned, we were in the mid-2000s um, generating about $2 million per year in mortgage taxes. Over the last four years, it's been about $900,000 per year. So how were we able to keep uh, expenditures flat? Uh, we did a lot of different um, things to, to, to help. Uh, one was the in-house engineering. We took, uh, we had been subcontracting out all of our engineering. Uh, we brought in some engineers and were able to significantly save. It was three or $400,000 per year compared to the 
the aughts, uh, 2000 through 2009. Uh, salt machines on the highway, plow trucks. Uh, we are even looking at the possibility of expanding that program now. The liability insurance and health insurance changes that the board has made over the last couple of years. Uh, ballpark figures, it's three or $400,000 worth of savings per year there. This isn't something we did, but the pension costs are likely to flatten out and potentially decrease over the next several years, so that's a positive. We've talked about doing an electricity review, another way that we can uh, contain costs. Staffing levels, uh, every time an employee uh, retires or moves on, we don't immediately fill the position. We take an analytical look at whether or not we need to replace them replace them partially or not replace them at all. And that plays into our continuous review of efficiencies. Uh, really, every chance we get to take a look at one of our programs, is there a better way to do this? Can we save a little bit of money here? Can we generate a little bit of revenue there? Some of the revenue changes, uh, we've pretty much bottomed out in sales tax and mortgage taxes. Um, as the supervisor mentioned, there was a new county allocation of sales tax where we lost about $300,000 a year. We're not going to lose any more. There's a, a floor as part of that new allocation, so it can't actually go below where we are. Um, so we'll either go up or stay flat, which is, you know, and things look pretty good. Um, and then the sale of surplus property across the street. This is going to be a big shot in the arm for our fund balance. We'll get a one-time revenue which will replenish fund balance, and then our job is to keep it at that new, new level moving forward. Highway fund actually looked really, oops, that said 2012, but it meant 2013. This is a roughly break-even year. When we get fund balance where we want it, that's, this is how we're going to want all the funds to look, you know, basically break-even. Um, they had a beginning fund balance of 645,000, ending fund balance of 640,000. The appropriated fund balance for 2014 is 185,000. We won't necessarily spend that, but that's what we're planning on in our current budget, which would leave us with fund balance of 455, a little below where we'd like it, but still pretty healthy. I point out that we pro we about wiped out the uh, highway fund balance, what, about three years ago when we had a tremendous about storm? About three years ago, we completely um, wiped it out. It was a very specific storm. It really only affected East Michigan, I think, town of Wappingers. We took the brunt of it. We actually, uh, in response to that storm, because the county would not adopt a, a state of emergency, we were not eligible for any funding from any other government agencies. So I think we spent $800,000 that year. Out unexpected of the unexpected so, to clean up the town and that just right. really decimated our highways uh, fund balance then but we're building it back up and little building by it little. back up at the expense of building back up general fund I mean yeah part of the reason general fund has been drawn down is because we've allowed highway to rebuild we've itself out over highway, the last yeah. couple of years Mark, yes I see there's a decrease of about $200,000 uh, from the previous year is that correct uh, well, where are we cutting? Uh, where, where do we, you know, plan on going with the savings? So we ended 2013 with 640,000. Right. The way we structured the 2014 budget would be that we would end up using 185,000 in fund balance. We won't necessarily do so. That's assuming certain levels of snow plowing costs, uh, which is unpredictable. Highway doesn't have the revenue variables that general fund does. It's really funded by only two sources, property taxes and CHIPS funding from the state. That's pretty much it. So we know what the revenues are going to be. But highway has significant variables with the weather in terms of uh, snow removal. Um, there's some money built in here that we, it's somewhat of a buffer. So hopefully we won't spend that 200000 But if things go according to budget, we will. That, uh... Yeah, there's another thing that I mean, when you talk about the highway uh, budget, what you have to really look at too, being as we have 200 miles of town roads. Uh, I mean, you can just say, okay, well, we're not going to spend, we're not going to spend, but there may be a time, there will be a time down the road, no pun intended, where it's going to catch up to you. Because if you let your roads deteriorate to such a, a condition that actually you have to put in more money to bring them up. So it's, it's sometimes it's better to spend a little bit more now 
than it is to just keep putting it off, putting it off, and creating bigger, bigger expenses down the road. And that's always been a, a, an issue when we sit down and look at our paving schedule. You know, what roads need it? What, how long are they going to last? Uh, what's it going to take to bring them up? So it's, that's a very difficult uh, calculation to make uh, with the highway fund. So highway fund is in, in good shape, but it has some challenges. One, uh, if things go according to budget, the fund balance at the end of the year will be um, a little under $500,000. We'd really like it to be more like 800000 to a million. Again, I don't think we need to rush to get there, but that should always be in the back of our minds. That's the target we'd like to see for highway. Increase the paving budget. Dennis is doing the best he can with limited resources, but we should probably have about 500000 more mm -hmm. in our paving budget in order to maintain the roads in East Fishkill, yeah. the 200 miles of roads, uh, and we're not there yet. We've been slowly building up that number over the past several years, but there's a ways to go. And harsh winters. Uh, we had a couple mild winters a few years back, but um, last winter certainly wasn't, and I don't think this one will be either. And that's a big variable for the highway fund. Special districts. Um, the big, there were several districts that were um, operating at deficits, uh, water and sewer districts. We've addressed that through two uh, means. The rate increases that we passed at the beginning of this year. Uh, the biggest or issue with the Hamlet sewer district was a lack of users, but we've really built that up over the past several years. In 2012, I think we had about 84 benefit units paying for the operations of Hamlet Sewer. Now I think we're up to 240, roughly. At the end of this year, we could be closer to 300. And by the end of 2015, I think realistically, we could be anywhere between 315 and 390 benefit units. So that solves the Hamlet Sewer um, problem. The water district issues should be solved by the rate changes that we made. Just mentioning the enterprise fund as to provide a source of water. Um, and really, we're targeting a small operating surplus in each district. We'd like to see uh, you know, slightly more in, the, in revenues than in expenditures. And that will allow for that one year where there's a significant repair required. Uh, we don't want to have to go out to bond every time there's a uh, significant repair. We don't know what year it's going to be, but we know it's going to happen in every district at some point. So we want to slowly build up those fund balances as well. And one way we're going to do that is by saving money on uh, our water and sewer operator. We, as you all know, went, um, did an RFP this year. We got back some uh, proposals, and you know we should save about eighty thousand dollars a year at least there just in the operations, and we're hoping to save more in the um, repairs as well. Moving on to some other financial issues, um, we have been visited by the New York State Office of the State Controller. They did a um, risk assessment in September of the town as a whole after reviewing all the different departments and all of our finances, they didn't find any major issues, none at all really, except they decided they wanted to come back and look at our recreation internal controls a little more closely and the financial condition of our sewer fund. Uh, they've finished the audit recreation. We've talked to them um, about a draft and we should see a final um, audit soon. Just to summarize what the discussions were and what's included in the audit is that they didn't find anything wrong. And looking back on it, we know that the probable reason that they decided to look more closely at the um, recreation department was that at the same time they had just found um, fraud in the Fishkill Recreation Department. So they were looking for those same flags in our department and didn't find them. However, they would like to see us tighten up. Uh, tighten up our record keeping in the recreation department, and they want to see the board adopt formal cash handling policies to ensure um, the protection of cash, which we see more in recreation than any other department. They're still conducting the financial condition audit of the sewer fund. I don't really anticipate any issues there. The only 
things they've considered is did we overbuild the sewer fund, which they signed off on, so you know it's a hard it, argument it's a hard argument make, for them yeah. to make. Yeah. Um, or, and uh, with the Hamlet sewer in particular, there was significant cost, but not enough users on board initially mm -hmm. uh, to uh, uh, to function. I think that problem's already been solved, so and, and they that, know it. But, but. I, and I, going into that one, Mark, I mean, you got to look. And when we built the sewer plant, I took office in 2006. Um, we had we had some needs for sewer existing in the town already. So we really were at a point where do we make the decision that the town had already spent three hundred thousand dollars on engineering with our previous engineers? Three I mean, three. I'm sorry, three hundred. No, it was three hundred thousand dollars. Did we have three million? Was it really? Yeah. Okay. Then just in just the, uh, the contract engineers and the legal, and the, oh, you're right. It was three million. I'm sorry. And uh, so we were kind of at a jumping off point. Do we actually go forward with the project, or do we shelve it with that kind of outlay already? Okay. It, and also we had a specific need with Unity Plaza and those those stores over there. Do we do we just cut? and build a district where we built it. So we built it, but if you look at when we built it, unfortunately, the, is the, the economic bubble burst. So although the sewer plant was, was predicted to bring in the certain flows, those flows never materialized. One of them being Hopewell Glen, which is still like building here and there, but nowhere is near what they predicted they would well, be building. Was like Lake Walton. Lake Walton was they another project. Yeah, yeah, so. Yeah. so. And so what? <clears throat> Yeah, kind of major and that was 220. That yeah, so what we see now is actually Scott, you and I sat down about what four years ago and said, look, at these things aren't happening where they said they would happen. So we actually drilled underneath the creek, right. and then we caught the school across the creek. Now we caught wildflower. So we're building. This is where it gets to your benefit users. We're finding the benefit users that were not considered actually in the original proposal. So, uh, and I think it's going to grow as the economy comes back, but this is a very difficult thing in this economy. So I just wanted to point that out, Mark. Absolutely. And based on the growth we've seen in the last year in benefit units and some of the projects on the plate right now, we may, in a very short period of time, look back on this and say we built just the right size, yeah. you know, uh, to well, a company. Do you mind to elaborate a little bit on what the question was as far as they had some questions about the, the sewer district uh, and then they signed off on it. What, what is it exactly that? Well, it was an expensive district. Well, what happens when you borrow money um, for a, a sewer district, um, if the cost per taxpayer is going to be over an annual threshold that the state controller sets, you have to send the entire project up to the state controller. They, their staff reviews it, they analyze it, they ask for more information, and then you actually get a certificate back signed by the control of the state of New York approving the district. And with that certificate, you're then allowed to borrow money to build your district. In this case, as the supervisor alluded to, when John took office, uh, there was a it was already approved for, I believe, $8 million. That had already been expended $3 million. The cost of construction came in higher, so a second application had to be made to the controller to have the higher authorization. They did their analysis and they came back and agreed, and the state controller signed off on it. So I think the point is, is if the controller already signed off on it twice, how could they go back now and say they have a problem? And they're looking at the cost to run the thing with 84 benefit units. They, they're saying, why? And our response is, well, we didn't expect there would be 84. And we can also il illustrate that, okay, there were 84 in 2012. There's already They probably alluded 300. to planning, but in, in other words, it's an economic factor that it's not being taken into account. Well, what happened is when the, the prior town boards had established the district, there was the Hopewell Glen project, the Lake Walton. They assessed 200 benefit units on the property across the street. There's 300 for Twin Creeks. So when you add that all up, instead of having five or six different plants, it made sense to build the one, and then the economy sounds so it's a little sluggish, but it's coming back. But it's coming back, and we're seeing, I think, as I said, by the end of this year, we have enough benefit units to justify the expenses. Um, another thing to mention is, although New York State comes every five or 10 years, we do contract an independent auditor, as selected by the board, um, to audit books and records of the town every year. 
and they produce a report with any findings and recommendations. I mention this because of what's recently happened in Beekman. Um, one of the things that came out of that um, that event, little, that little event yes. <laughs> was that they weren't having uh, an annual audit by an independent firm. Yeah. Um, Beekman has had their little issue with their recently, it came to light with their controller, and it cost their town quite a bit of money, and this is why we don't think we would ever have that problem. In addition, they didn't have basic separation of duties, um, which we've had in place here for, for years, which doesn't allow any single person the same access that the controller had in Beekman. Um, so we have the audit conducted by an independent firm every year, and we, you know, every three to five years, we'll re-evaluate the firm. The board will have an opportunity to select a different firm if they, if they like, based on either pricing or performance. Just a basic summary. Uh, general fund is good shape, but we need to begin rebuilding unrestricted fund balance. We do that by um, making sure our, our expenditures don't exceed our revenues. Highway fund also in good shape, but need to build up fund balance and paving budget. Special districts, the majority are fine, and the rate adjustments and the additional benefit units will solve any problems that exist um, moving forward. And that's the end. Now, Mark, you know, when you say that the projected fund balance at the end of this year will be such and such, these are all projections. I remember a few years ago we projected using $650,000 of fund balance, and actually at the end of the year we didn't use any. Right. Uh, so there are different factors that There's will... a lot of variables. Yeah, a lot of variables. I mean, we, we watch the mortgage taxes uh, when we get those reports to try to find some sort of a trend, but the uh, mortgage recording tax has been really... Really, all so you're thinking there's more home sales. You're thinking you're going to see more revenue, but it hasn't. Uh, there hasn't been a real trend to to, to see that yet. So, uh, but these things could change. Uh, the winter is definitely and always a big thing in the end of the year. So, we're trying our best. And uh, again, we do have good fund balance, not as good as we would like it, and uh, we will we will build on that. So, I'd like to thank Mark for all your work. Thank you for your yes, work with you. Moody's also. Um, Again, we'll a double double A two rating is a very good rating, and uh, I think we'll be uh, building upon that so that we do away with that negative outlook. Yeah, it's so. kind of a shame because on the Moody's report, they mention the double A two and then focus on the negative outlook. Yeah. you know. So, but uh, no, I think that's good. So uh, I appreciate that, and uh, we'll see where it goes. We do our best. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. Hard work and supervisor, you too. Thank you, thank you, Councilman. We try our best, and uh, you know this has been probably the most difficult situation. This recession has just caught, you know caught a lot of a lot of people by surprise, and we're still waiting to come out of the thing. You know it's tough. There's no jobs out there. Uh, I, I saw one of the reports this morning that Wall Street expected to be up was actually I forget what it was spending or something was down. So then, obviously, the market went down. So everybody's still waiting for this, but this recession is just a tough one. So a lot of uncertainty out there, uh, but I think we're very well, very well positioned to deal with anything. Uh, number two on the discussion is discuss a recreation plan and field use forms. Um, Scott, we talked about a recreation uh, a plan to rehab some of our recreation facilities a while back. Um, it had been brought to our attention by by some of our leagues and uh, by some people in the in the in the uh, in the public that you know voice some concerns. When I walk around a little bit, I do. I'm not a sports person, but I did see some issues that I thought that it looks like they've been corrected. But you want to give us some thoughts on your what what, what you think would be a good way to go? As okay. Bar says one thing. If I may point out, especially with this weather, is our fields don't seem like they drain correctly. Right? Se seems to be a big issue here and. We have rain, the sun comes out, but the fields still are not playable. Yeah, I think this year with the long winter and the kids wanting to get out and the parents wanting to get out and then being exacerbated by the rain, the delays in opening up the fields, you know, I think it's really brought to light, you know, the condition of the fields, even though they're well groomed, you know, and the lines are striped and they're mowed, you know, there's still some, you know, drainage issues and really kind of maybe what I might call deferred maintenance that I think we need to catch up on in order to, you know, 
have them operable as soon as possible after a rain event. And, and I've visited not all the fields, but, but several of the fields, and you know, in some instances, the, the problems are, are this kind of the same problems. And in, in the terms of baseball, I think you know, a lot of it is, I won't say it's a simple fix, but you know, they can be addressed, you know, I, I think, at a reasonable price, and we can get them you know, back online. I think the soccer fields are a little more complicated. They're larger areas, and to take them out and, and grade them and drainage, put drainage in, you know, that, that's a larger project. But I, I think the baseball fields, and we'll go through it, I think that's something we can certainly get our arms around and get started on that maybe even this summer. So what, I, what I've done for the board is just kind of summarize, you know, all our fields, at least the, the main fields. We do have these utility fields that little kids play on just for pickup, and I'm not really including those. Mm -hmm. I'm really looking at, you know, the main fields that the leagues use, okay? So obviously, you know, the Hamlet has six baseball fields. Uh, we have three large multi-sport fields for football, soccer, and lacrosse. So those sports share those fields. There's three of those. Lime Kiln has the two baseball, which are lit, and, and they have a soccer field. I have a question mark with the soccer field because the way it's actually laid out, you know, a good portion of the soccer field encroaches on the infield of one of the baseball fields. So I don't think we're ever going to really have a premier soccer, soccer field no, there. No. And it really doesn't pay to put a lot into that soccer field because a good portion of it falls in the infield anyway. You know, so it, it can still be utilized and we can still make some improvements, you know, but I wouldn't call it a premier soccer field. Um, Lee Town has a soccer field as well as a baseball field. And we, we know we do have that grant to do some mm -hmm. improvements. And I know the rec board's looking at maybe how best to spend that. We'll get into that in a minute. Breadview has four baseball fields. Uh, the thing about Breadview is that it's right next to the Sprout, Cre Sprout Creek, which floods on occasion. So it really makes no point to make any significant improvements to Breadview because you can get a flood and wash it all away. So I think you take it for what it is, make some minor improvements just to make it safe. You know, mm -hmm. uh, but I don't think we're going to invest any great sums at, at Breadview. Uh, 52 soccer complex has nine soccer fields, depending on how they're arranged. Maybe a couple of more from time to time. Um, you know, again, we all know rains; they're closed for the day afterwards. You know, the way it was kind of originally laid out did not provide for any great drainage. You know, the, might, the way you might do it today. Um, I think Beekman has a great facility, but when you go there, you can see how they're all graded in between the fields with under drains, and they, mm -hmm. and they dry up quick, you know. So 52 soccer complex, that's going to be a larger one to get arms around us to decide what phase and to what extent we want to try to improve that, because that, be that could be a big project. And it has irrigation in already. So unfortunately, to start making grade changes with irrigation in place gets tricky. Gets even trickier. Yeah. So. Now, the one improvement that we can make and we're working to make actually this summer is to improve the parking at the western uh, field. Uh, we have the permit from the DEC. We have a budget together uh, with approval. We're going to start clearing in a couple of weeks when the, when the soccer field is shut down for the season because they definitely need you know, more parking over there. I think anybody who's driven through there knows they need more parking. Right. Very, yeah. very evident. We know. And then Wikipi, I think, is a little used field, but Wikipi has uh, two large fields. They, they're used for a combination of soccer, lacrosse, and baseball. I know when they, when they have the soccer tournaments, Memorial Day, there's been times where they've had to actually shift some of the teams over to Wikipi. And, you know, Wikipi's all not that bad. I haven't, you know, looked real hard at it, but I know myself last year, Memorial Day, it rained all that weekend, and we played there. So... I think Wikipedia, you know, maybe is, is also a good alternative. Mm -hmm. um, so those are the overall locations. And getting into some of the little particulars, um, the Hamlet baseball fields, so they're not draining properly. I, what, what really I think has happened for the most part over time here and at Lime Kiln is that, you know, the kids are running home plate first and, and third to home. And over time, you know, the clay is just rutting out. It's just rutting out and the grass encroaches and little by little by little, You've got this rut, and then the clay's pushed up and the grass is grown in, and then the water sits there. It just has no way to get out. Uh, simple fix, you shave the earth a little bit, you fill in the clay a little bit, and the water drains, and, and, and you've got a remedy. Now, now, that's the simple solution. I mean, you could go as far as re-aerating the whole field, you know, 
tear it all up and mm -hmm. soften it up and everything. But I don't know that we need to, to go to that extent. I think it would be better for us, in my opinion, to get our fields from a B minus to a B plus or our C minus to a B plus than mm -hmm. trying to get to an AA type of thing. Right, right. We're gonna, it's going to cost a lot of money to get to there. But I think everybody would be satisfied with a B plus field you know, okay. kind of thing. Double A too. <laughs> you know, and I think that's that's maybe the right approach yeah. to take because this way we can make improvements on more of the fields yeah. than trying to sink a lot of money to any one field. Um, and from what I'm hearing, I think people will be satisfied with that. You know, they want it safe and they want to be able to get on the field. They don't mm -hmm. care that it's Yankee Stadium. Anyone, they just the other, want to be able to get out and play. Right, they want to play. Yeah, and we talked. I think I forget who's, who told me. Um, probably Jared. I think that one day they were trying to make the fields playable here. How much water are they pumped off? And so when this water is trapped, they're they're pumping for a couple hours. And you shouldn't have to pump. That's shouldn't the whole point. You shouldn't have so. to pump. And, so, uh, it, and it's and something that, that creeps up on you. You know, yeah. it's like a road rut and the asphalt. Over time, you, yep. become, you, you notice it, but it's been years in the making. Yeah, yeah. You know? So if we can do some improvements, it'll help save us on time with, with the guys trying to make the fields right. playable right. right after a storm. So what we've been doing is we've been uh, kind of looking at different uh, companies that maybe do this kind of work, whether we do it on an hourly basis or we're actually going to get some quotes. I know we're meeting with a contractor next week just to start getting our arms better around it. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, if we can get people that will give us hard prices to do the field, that's great. Yeah. Uh, you know, otherwise I'm content to have just some qualified, you know, workmen yeah. and, and just kind of go through the field. If it takes us a week to shape it up or whatever it is, you know, we can throw a budget to it. But I think, you know, one way or the other, we'll get a better idea. It's manageable. You know, and we and we'll pick the first field we want to start. Whether it's, I would myself probably start at Lime Kiln, um, so everyone can kind of see how the end result comes, and then maybe we, before we start tinkering what our prime in the main are in the main complex, yeah. You know, right. And Scott, you're talking just a few fields a year, right? We're not going to do this all in one shot. Well, you can't. We can, right. You can't. Otherwise, you're going to get to you know, play. one maybe two crews that you feel are competent. You know, to, to do this is isn't just like digging a ditch and laying pipe. It's, you know, it's really like finesse. Right. You've got to have a real good eye. You've got to have real finesse people that this is what they do. So I think if you, you know, in the case of Lime Kiln, you've got two fields right there, and you could probably tackle both of those. But you're never going to jump from you know, a location to a location. Mm -hmm. Maybe here we, we do two at a time. But, you know, we're going to start at the first location. I'm thinking Lime Kiln, see how that goes, and then we'll see how many we can do, you know, per year from there. And of course, we we'll have to schedule these because we don't know which yes. which ones we can take out. Which right. you know, obviously, this would be starting, right. Right. you know, working with the right. schedules. So, and I'll also add, uh, you know, I think uh, Lee Town Road that while it may not be a, a premier field and, and it has different issues from the draining, I think you know, safety wise, I, I think we need to get probably Lee Town early into the mm -hmm. process as well. Okay, because I, I know there's been complaints about that. So. So anyway, I think the Hamlet fields and the Lime Kiln fields are very similar. You know, IBM did a beautiful job. They built them 30 years ago, and then all they did was cut the grass. Right, right. And like anything, you got to do a little bit more than just cut, cut the grass. The grass yeah. to, to keep up. Um, as far as Lee, uh, Lee Town, I know we had gotten that grant. We had the money sitting in the bank somewhere. Yes. Um, did we ever figure what we're going to be doing as far as Lee Town? Because I know that's not really enough money to do Lee Town, but we're trying to get the best bang for our buck. Well, I think we're going to take the approach we're going to try to get. I mean, I would call Lee Town a C minus, mm -hmm. you know, kind of thing. And if we can get that to a B, B plus, I think a lot of people would be happy. And okay. That's, that's what we're going to do over the next few weeks is take a look at that 100000 and just see how far it will go. Instead okay. of doing the whole soccer field, it's just filling the worst spots. Baseball. You know, I, you know, I think the baseball field has potential up there. Um, you, know, you have all-star teams. You have these these leagues that to play on a on a grass field is, is tough on the infield. And if we're going to take fields out of service, mm -hmm. you know, maybe Brett, few being that we have the grant, we might want to kick that up a notch. It doesn't flood out. Right. You know, maybe we put a clay infield in. You know, spend the money there. We do have the grant, mm -hmm. and make that a, you know a nicer. Facility, yeah. and that'll help us as we take these other fields <coughs> out of service. Some place to cycle off to, you know. Okay. So, um, but we'll be following up with budgets for each field. You know, we'll, the board will have a pretty good handle on what it's going to cost overall. Okay. This is just an initial kind of kickoff to everyone get a handle. So, Bradford, we talked about. I think it's just some some really minor repairs at Bradford. You know, you've got areas where the second basement stands and. 
it's worn bare, so you're running from grass onto a dirt spot onto grass, and a kid could trip, and you know, it's, so it's really a safety thing. Yeah. You know, where the ball plays different the minute it hits that dirt. So, I, I think those are simple fixes. You okay. know. Okay. Um, soccer complex is really going to be a, a bit involved. I, I really can't speak to what extent the work's going to be required over there. That's going to be a larger project, yeah. the soccer complex at 52. But I think the parking, you know, we should move forward. At least parking get the parking. first, yeah. Uh, lime kiln, again, you know, it's really the grading is off at lime kiln. It can be made to work. Um, again, it's never going to be a premier field because it plays onto the infield of the baseball. So I think the rec board's got to make a decision on Priority of that mm -hmm. field and how much we want to want to do with that field. Um, so that's that's lime kiln, but definitely the baseball fields. Okay. You know, those, those are definitely got to do something. Yeah. Else. And I think it's they are going to be the focus at this point. Right. Would be the baseball fields. And, and I know at lime kiln, I mean, I'm focusing on the, on soccer and and baseball, but I mean, there's handball, there's tennis, there's the old basketball court. Mm -hmm. I mean, in its prime, it was just a great facility. And I think again, maybe we need to look. Not just at baseball and soccer line, yeah. Them, but basketball possibly. There is the one nice court up on top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the, the pair of tennis courts are in, in real good shape. You know, I have no feel for the demand of our residents there, right. but but we should keep that in mind. That, mm -hmm. that lime kiln, you know, a long term still plan. has a lot of potential. At lime yeah. kiln. Okay. Um, Lee Town. You know, these soccer fields are just such large areas that if to get them fixed is, is a major undertaking, so Lee Town really falls in that category. Um, we, we did originally come up with a grading plan to really redo the whole field. It was hundreds of thousands of dollars. And I think rather than trying to make it an A kind of field, we mm -hmm. got to take approach it and try to make it a B kind of field. And I think that'll be more manageable. Wikipedia I haven't taken a hard look at, other than I know I played there a year ago with my son and it held up during the rain, so hopefully that's not going to take too much. Okay. And again, I think it's more like the little kids that play baseball. It's not any of the real, the older leagues that are playing baseball there. So. All right. So, so you'll be meeting. Summary. Yep. You'll be meeting with the firm. How did you find this firm? These firms that do this work. Are they. Uh, well, my office downstairs has been trying to reach out, and just through, you know, Word talking, yep. and you know, oh, by the way, oh yeah, we did Whoppers' fields, or okay. we do this town's field. So. I'm encouraged that maybe we have some local contractors that actually have this experience with other towns doing okay. these kind of, so we can check their references. So I'm encouraged with that. So we'll okay. see where, where it goes. Good. Let's see what happens with that and, you know, yeah. keep, us, keep us in the loop, see how that goes. Good. Thank you, Scott. And we'll see you. And Tom, I know you're the liaison to the rec board. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's, we'll be seeing what happens there as far as, you know, this just came to really to my attention about a month and a half, two months ago, but I think it, it makes a lot of sense to do what we can to rehab the fields. Right. There's been a lot of complaints, particularly about Lee Town, and uh, Scott and I talked, uh, I think it was last week for a mm -hmm. few minutes, about these fields. And um, if we could rotate them in and what we can do with them, yep. it would be very good. And we, uh, if the whole dope thing comes about, mm -hmm. That's a good thing too because we can move. They'll take a little the, pressure they off. They can take the ours. pressure off, and the kids yeah. can go and play there. Yeah. Good. So, so we'll see how it goes. So, Scott will keep us informed yeah. as to. Uh, and, and the one thing I didn't mention out. in the Hamlet, but I know the uh, the Davis house mm -hmm. that was purchased has enough area for a field. So I don't know what the plan is there. You know whether that would be baseball, soccer, lacrosse. I know Chan knows, but I mean, there's that would be project, something we would discuss with recreation in and the talk wings, about. And that will be a substantial project when, when that comes. We're laying out another field. Yeah. Okay. Whatever that kind of field that that may be. All righty. Sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, speaking of fields, I know <laughs> I just like to say we did get a field use uh, field license agreement. I believe it is. Um, and this is really something I think we should pursue with the uh, with the leagues because we're allowing the leagues to use our fields, and uh, there are certain requirements. And I know our insurance company has certain requirements. And uh, the field use agreement, I think, uh, addresses a lot of the concerns. I remember a few years ago, I think it was uh, spectator one of the soccer fields tripped over something, hurt himself, and ended up turning, suing the town for $6 million. You know, so we do open our fields to the leagues. We do let them use it. 
unfortunately that lawsuit never went anywhere but you know we need to have certain things in place as far as insurances making sure that you know everything's addressed in that manner and I've read the field use agreement and I, I think it's good Tom would you like to specify any of the advantages to having sure this we um, well obviously I think the general some general parameters the um, use of recreational facilities in the town are open to all taxpayers of the town mm -hmm. and they're to benefit all taxpayers so when you um, get a program that's going to have I'll say the exclusive use of a facility for a certain period of time uh, the law requires and the, the con state constitution requires that there be a benefit for the residents of the town so really the leagues they do wonderful work with the children but the town can allow them to use the fields because it's benefiting the children as residents of the town mm -hmm. and so because of that reason usually you have uh, agreements so that the town has some knowledge as to how the programs are being focused towards the residents of the town um, doesn't mean that it has to be 100 percent all the participants residents but some control over the fact that these programs are benefiting the residents of the town and some recognition that the cost to the resident for participation in the program recognizes the f the quote free use of the facilities that the taxpayers are paying so with that in mind in 2012 we began a uh, draft of the leak sponsorship and field use agreement uh, which was circulated. I met with the rec board several times. They came back with a draft with their comments, which are before the board also. You got two agreements side by side. Some of the things in the agreement would also allow some information about the leagues. Um, you know, most of them are not for profit corporations, they file an annual financial report. So the, this agreement requires them to give us a copy of that so that we know that the, the revenues that they generate within the league is going for the mm -hmm. benefit of the residents of East Fishkill who we're allowing to use the fields on an exclusive basis. Right, and, and, and you're just asking for financials they have to file right. anyway, so it's no additional correct. work, correct? And so then what happened is in 2013, as, as we know, we were looking for, to change insurance companies to save uh, the premium cost and we were successful with that and one of the things that the new carrier is uh, very interested in is for us to finish this process but I also had them give us some comments and there are some things that they would like to see us implement mm -hmm. number one is um, East Fishkill has certain rules with respect to the use of the field uh, I remember I was somewhat taken back some years ago there was never any formal rule about if there's a lightning storm right that right. you have to stop playing on the fields and everyone has to leave the field and that there's a generally accepted standard that after the last bolt of lightning you have to wait 15 or 20 minutes before you can go back on the fields mm -hmm. um, so that we adopted the town board adopted that but nowhere do we have all the rules gathered together so the insurance company would like these agreements to also reflect the rules so um, we're going to do that also um, they would like some process and this this is good for all of us that when a, a team first or people for the leagues first get to the field that they just do a general overview to mm -hmm. see that there are no obvious safety things that people had been in the night before and broke some bottles and that there's not glass around mm -hmm. just an overview and maybe a little check off form that they did that that would be good thirdly as you mentioned there was someone who was a spectator at a game tripped over alleged that they tripped over a sprinkler uh, and was injured there were a lot of people there but there was no mechanism where the person in charge that they would have just given us a little sheet to let us right. know what happened so mm -hmm. we didn't have to so that that would be helpful um, and also with our own staff when they do the morning inspection of the fields to make sure everything's fine that there be a record of that kept so these are kinds of things okay. that we're going to try to weave into the agreement and to work with the leagues on okay sounds good a uh, couple well there's one thing I did disagree with I was reading the agreement said that our staff would not line the fields on the weekends but we do line the field I believe we do Tom late yes. we line the fields on the weekends yes, they, so. do. they had something the staff could still do um, this also this also allows uh, the leagues to the right to work on the fields to make them playable and usable conditions so I think it allows a certain uh, amount of help from the leagues in, in keeping the uh, the fields up and playable and I think that's something that would be very helpful to us um, one of the issues I was talking to the rec guys a couple weeks ago and I've seen it myself I hate to say it but sometimes some of our sports leagues will use a facility and they'll just leave 
and there'll be garb and there'll be bottles, a lot of water bottles. Water bottles always seem to be the thing. There'll be a ton of water bottles around, and just you know. So I was talking to our rec guys about it the other day. It was just chatting and you know this is something I would like to see the leaks take up as far as respect for the property you're using and I think it'd be appropriate if when they leave <coughs> it's 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 uh, the use of our fields is something we're offering you so please respect our fields and when you leave just pick up it's kind of simple and I think it's something would be nice for the kids to learn at an early age so I think just something simple like that and I know that's in here about the leaks making sure that you know the, the the fields are picked up afterwards. So, I mean, I think it formalizes a lot of things. I think it answers a lot of the questions. Our insurance company is very happy to see this kind of a document being developed. So, I think it has a lot of a uh, lot of good things going for it. Any any thoughts, Tom? I know you're on. We again leads onto the rec board. Uh, no, I, I have their um, their comments that they made, uh, their suggestions, and and this and uh, going through it. I think. What we have here, what, what you came up with, is, um, is pretty good. And, um, I, think, I think it's fairly yeah. acceptable for them to use our field. So. Yeah. And I understand in the past that um, some of the leagues have uh, sent money to us in help of refurbishing some of the fields yeah. and helping out. So and I'm sure that'll, uh, that'll come up again, which will uh, be good. Yeah, I think it's a good it kind of formalizes things. So I think. Uh, and in this day and age, this is really the kind of a document we need to make sure everybody's, you know, working working together. So, thoughts, Nick? Yeah, I have thoughts. There's no mechanism in here to charge the, the leagues any sort of fee for maintenance of the fields. Now, I thought the whole idea of this, now I've spoken with people from Fishco, from Wappingers, we're very generous with mm -hmm. our clubs. and. Rightly so. Yeah. But now we're talking about improving the fields. So we have a million dollar budget mm -hmm. for. Million two. Yes, yeah. now very nicely that we had a financial presentation tonight so we could talk about a million dollars. Doesn't go that far. So I think it would be very fair if the league should pay a portion mm -hmm. of maintenance to the fields. I don't see why every other town has it. Yeah, no, I, I, I would agree with that. I've always been of the mind where, and as, as the attorney just said, um, the benefit, well, there is a benefit to the children, and that is one of the big benefits to recreation. But I do agree that there's a specific use where you're going to have either baseball or soccer or, 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 or lacrosse or somebody um, using those fields. Well, then, you know, that is specific to them. So I think that might be appropriate. I wonder what the fees that they charge in the other towns are. Tom, did you get anything from um, the attorney from no. Oppingers? No, no, never did. Um, he said he was going to send Tom their agreement. Okay. I'll follow back up with that. Yeah. I don't know what they charge, but um, I'm, I'm not talking about a large fee. Yeah. I think something no. nominal that would help out help us out with help, with our, help our rec budget yeah right yeah. in the past there have been leagues that have been contrib contributed to uh, maintaining the, i don't know about maintaining fields but updating them actually mm -hmm. i know in baseball we're going have, towards it well that's right. very and in soccer, it's very nice yeah but again i think if we have a formal document that we're going to be adopting that that would be something we should definitely look at a field use fee um, I think that would be appropriate. I wouldn't want to be onerous. I'd like to see what the other towns do charge. I right. think that would be just something to stay right in, this, right in the same as a ballpark with the other towns. So, no, I think that'd be great. If you wouldn't mind, if yeah, we check absolutely. on that. Yeah, absolutely. I'll call we'll again. see what we can do. Tom, um, as far as uh, the electricity, is this something new or uh, they've been paying part of the electric? Uh, I think all along they've been. Uh, reimbursing part of the electrical costs. Yeah. Yes, You're talking about, about the about big the meters on the field. Right. Yeah. And so I didn't know if this was something new. No, I think that's just formalizing. Did they pay just so much or do we know it's actually? If you're talking about the big lights, I know there's a fee to have the big lights turned on from a certain time to a certain time in the season. So I, I don't know what that fee is. I mean, I pass by the yeah. fields at uh, 11 yeah. something at night and I see the lights on over there. Yeah, and I drove inside the park, and nobody's there. So yeah, we've discussed what, that if a game would just, and we've discussed that we've tried to get a better handle on when the lights are on, when oh, the lights yeah. are off. We've sometimes, that, yeah. uh, excuse me, sometimes what'll happen will it be a game will wrap up, maybe half hour early, but the lights are still on when you drive through. We are, we certainly recognize that because the amount of electricity those big lights are using. So uh, we're so trying actually to, somebody shuts off the lights. Or it's, it's a automatic. It's a very complicated. 
thing. We can talk about it, but I know when they installed the lights, they ended up going to a contract yeah. with a company in Indiana, Indiana or some darn thing. thing. Yeah. Yeah. They're scheduled know, through, and strange. supposedly um, it's scheduled yeah. through another company. And some are and some aren't. Some do have their switches right here. Limekiln has their switches right there in Limekiln. So uh, we've been discussing that. That was a matter of our discussion about a month ago. That we had a discussion on that. So uh, we're very sensitive to that. Ironically, it seems like this company in Indiana or wherever they're located does a very good job. They know when the lights are supposed to go on, when they're supposed to go off. They're, they, by computer, you let them know. And they even know the status of the lights, if it's working, if it's not working. So it, it's, just I, out of curiosity, just makes why, me. Why a uh, company so far away controls the lights and not let it down? May, I have no idea. I just well, know. I think, do something well, when we, when we researched this, apparently yeah. what happened years ago, right. when they bid out the lights and everything, well, it was part of the, yeah. the, the, the whole package. Part of the package. So we, we contract that? And then we, our rec supervisor gives them the times when yeah. the lights are supposed to go on and off. So, you know. Yeah, we had, a, we had a major light project done eight years ago, and I think that. I was more than that. Well, they had the original one, then they replaced uh, a lot of the wooden poles. About seven years ago, I think they yeah. did the lights. They replaced a lot of the wooden yeah. ones, they did the trail lights. The operation so. came with the package, and yeah. they were able to yeah. track the yeah. luminaire out. And ironically, I mean. Out. It's very it, sophisticated. It, it, it seems to work, but we are looking into that Here one. The lime kiln. Lime kiln's a timer, I believe. That one's a timer, yeah. That's yep. a fashion timer. Yeah. So, uh, but we know we don't like to see those lights on and nobody playing under them either. You know, that's a big uh, expense. Yeah, a couple of times I drove by, nobody in the field. Yeah. Well, and sometimes what happens is that the games are scheduled and then they cancel them. Yeah. And then there's no mechanism that it can be readjusted. Yeah, and my guess is they leave a little cushion in case it goes to extra innings. I mean, mm -hmm. so they probably leave a little cushion. But also, if they're on, they've been paid for. So, but we agree. So if you want to check on that, Nick, uh, yeah, that I would will. be good. And let's let's see what happens. Peter, any well, thoughts on it? No, we've been working on this for years. So what I'm going to do is incorporate all of these comments tonight and any other comments you have into one, hopefully, final now agreement. All, now, they've also got to give it all these different leagues have their own insurance policies, too. Yeah, they correct? do that already, but this formalizes it. Yeah. I think the, the last part that's a lot of work here is the town clerk's checking on various rules that the board has adopted over the years. Yeah. I think we're going to find that there are a few. So I think, and one of the uh, other things we're going to change in here is we did find that the whatever the sport is, they have to follow, like if they're part of a, a major umbrella organization, they have to follow the regular rules of that sport because we did find that one of the programs util utilizing the fields kind of modified the rules and there was an injury mm -hmm. and that, that would present a problem and liability for us. So we want the the, the obligation on the league's part that, you know, if there's soccer and they're part of the United States soccer program, yeah. that they follow the rules that are there and that they don't make changes to it unless we at least know of it and are okay with it. Okay. All right. Very good. So, Tom, you'll still be working on compiling all these. Yes, and so hopefully I'll get back to you in a few weeks once I get the information from Rob. Okay. I have a I question. Did, I do have it from Fishgill, and they do have a fee schedule, right. which I can provide to you. Um, I have a question on Section 1, sub um, number 3, the agreement and termination. It says that 90 days before if mm -hmm. either party wants to terminate. Do you think the, is too much? Uh, no, no, but I was reviewing the rec board's comments. They want to remove that. What would be, why would, why would that want to be removed? Uh, they, they want it for a one year, a fixed period, and have it renewable each year. They also want to so, want to uh, remove the provision I had in there that one of the reasons we had, want them to run the programs is to, to create sportsmanship and mm -hmm. various other goals, and, that, and that's been removed, which I don't understand why. Fair play and the desire to excel. I thought that was a good lie. But. So they, they stricken that and they haven't replaced it with something else, which kind of struck me as the, yeah. I don't know if there should just be anything as far as conduct. I don't know Do we have any football gets a little. I think they have that I'm within sure their own do. charters. Yeah. Yeah. What's that? Within their own charters, yeah. I'm sure they have that. And we also have a town-wide rule that no coach or anyone who deals with the children can be dealing with them unless they've gone through a formal mm -hmm. background check. And it's either one that the league has that we've had now for years. Uh, it's one either that the league has themselves that's recognized 
or if they don't, we have a, a, a service that does it in-house right. and does a background check and we have a, a committee because oftentimes someone who's going to be a coach, something comes up in their background, but it doesn't really disqualify them yeah. from being in the program, but we, we, we have, have somebody an in-house committee that we review it. Yeah, yeah that's, that's coaches. What about umpires and officials? Yeah, the umpires and officials come with certification from the leagues. They're all, anyone who's on the field with the kids or comes in contact with the kids. Has gone through all kids. those security and background checks Correct. and all that kind of stuff. Correct. Now. Anyone who has any possibility of being with the child um, as part of the program has to be cleared. Okay. So if you work on that a little bit more time, we'll see yeah. what the, uh, the next edition looks like. Good. Uh, there was something did come up I just have to bring to the board's uh, attention and I need to ask a question. Uh, brush drop off. We've had brush drop off. It's been going on for a couple weeks now across the street and we've had uh, a, one or two tree companies uh, trying to drop off their from their work. They, you know, obviously cutting trees, uh, trying to bring their brush and drop it off. Now, we did, first of all, when we passed the resolution authorizing the brush drop off, uh, the first sentence says to provide a drop off area to fish go residents. In my mind, residents does not, although these three uh, companies are residents, I don't think we ever intended it to be for a commercial company. Obviously, you come cut my tree, you haul it away, I pay you to haul it away so you don't bring it over here and get rid of it for free. Or as this one said, charge $15, which the company we caught didn't even pay the $15 fee, so they've been told to leave. Um, I just want to make sure if the board is comfortable, and I think one of the problems when we first, you, you know, when you draft something like this, you try to look at everything. Who's going to be coming in? Um, vehicles larger than six wheels, $15 per load and require a ticket. I can check to see how many vehicles larger than six wheels, but should we even entertain them? Because now we're getting to the commercial realm, and I don't know. I mean, I know we're trying to make this fair for everybody. Um, but one thing I'm going to ask the board tonight, if it's okay, I want to enact a policy that uh, no commercial tree companies can come in and drop off your brush. I mean, you're getting paid, or any commercial company. I mean, I, this is for the homeowners. This is not for a company to go out, cut. They're charging you to get rid of it so you don't bring it over here and drop it off the expense of these official ta taxpayers. Right. Yeah, I'd say no commercial landscaping or tree companies. I would not say commercial companies because like a lot of properties technically like a pizzeria or something I mean they could have a tree fall on their property mm -hmm. that's not it's technically commercial yeah and I wouldn't say you're outlawing local businesses okay I'd say landscaping in Contractors well, or something like I don't know how you'd word it. I mean, the way I would do it then, I was going to. You know what I mean? Yeah, I was going to ask to strike vehicles larger than six wheels, fifteen dollars per load, require ticket. But if you want, we can keep that in. But then we'll also the policy will will be um, again no no tree companies, no landscaping companies. Yeah. But I don't know if that covers it. To be honest with you, I, I suppose that covers it. You okay. know, you see, we're trying to address this issue here, and I want to be able to tell the fellow across the street and the town clerk mm -hmm. that, no, they can't dump here. They have to dispose of it. How much of a load increase has it been with, from the commercial? Oh, uh, you know, uh, it's, lar it's, it's, it's larger than the uh, six wheel. It's a, it's a big, uh, big truck. I don't right, know what size. We have two options. Size. We could reestablish something for commercials if you guys want. I mean, I don't know if we could bring in, it's up mm -hmm. to the rest of the board, what else? Do away with it completely. I mean, a lot, yeah. of, a lot of the tree companies chip it and bring it in chipped. Yeah. Don't they? Or, or they'll chip it. But if you have sometimes when you have brush. But, but the problem we have is that even after we process it, we can't get rid of it fast enough. Yeah. And DEC doesn't allow us to store it. Yeah. So, so we have to move this quickly. If you start quickly. bringing commercial stuff, we're probably going to get beyond the limits yeah. and then we're, we're yeah. going to have a problem at the end of the year to get rid of it right. because you yeah. can't even give it away. We'll have to pay. So yeah. Yeah. Been through. But we we usually do. sell that stuff. Last time I understand. There's no, there's no. no market for it. We've yeah. tried. We it's hard to get out. rid of. We, we had one bid that was like a dollar a yard a dollar or something a yard, like that, yeah. and the guy never came for it. And, but, yeah. I remember the Iowa superintendent said we might sell it yeah. for a profit. You so know, we I tried all of that. And yeah. It, uh, one of the local landscapers did buy some last year. We still have 
piles all over. So, and but that's DC a good point. Does their annual inspection. If but at some them. point, we're going to have to come up with a disposal plan. Whether yes. Let's give it yeah. away. But at some point, we're what about get there. reopening to the public? I know that when we had it over here, it was a traffic yeah. problem. What about whatever we store it? We're going to available over there for yeah. them. We're going to, um, one thing that we do is we're trying to be um, <coughs> respectful of the local landscapers because springtime, that's when they sell their mulch. So, but come middle of summer, I'm going to open that up to take it out as you bring it in. I don't want to do it right now because this is their big time year and they like to sell their mulch. But yes, absolutely be. Any homeowner wants to come in, drop right. off, take some with you. We'd be right. more than happy. We'll try to use some at highway. We're going to try to use some with our beautification. So uh, I just like to, because we got a few years ago from over a highway, we had gotten quite a few complaints from local landscapers because they're saying, hey, you know, you're competing with our business. So we try to hold off till later in the year, but absolutely we'll make that available after the, after the peak. Um, if you're okay, I would rather say that at this point, um, how would we put it? No commercial vehicles or no, uh, nobody, Nobody operating a business. We're not going to be part of your business plan to, you right. know, just take your, your brush, you know. I'll be very specific. Commercial, as far as cutting trees and yeah. brush, doesn't have to be commercial in general. Be very specific. As far as yeah. to these companies that are doing this kind of business, that unfortunately we cannot accept your material. Yeah. And, you know. So if you guys, if everybody's it's okay. Be general commercial. Yeah. I'll be very yeah. specific. Yeah. The type of commercial. Okay, that'll be the new policy. That way, the tree companies, landscape companies, cannot come in and get rid of their what they're getting paid to get rid of. They'll have right. to take it to a, a regular facility for that. But they can come in and buy our mulch. <laughs> but they can come in and buy our mulch. Yes, they can do well, that. Well, they can give it to them. <laughs> they can do that. So, all right, I just wanted to square that away. I mean, you know, when we when we passed a resolution a couple of years ago, you're trying to figure everything out. This just kind of came up. So, all righty. Sounds good. I'll let the town clerk's office know tomorrow, and I'll let the uh, gentleman that's over at the brush drop off know. So take care of it. <coughs> All right. I think that that's about it for tonight. Um, we have liaison reports. Councilman Cassidy, highway. Uh, yep. The highway department continues to repair catch basins, finishing up on the road sweepings from the winter. Uh, Subcontractor is mowing the shoulders of the roads, and crews are. Still out patching potholes from the winter. Wow. Still going. Yeah, it has been, this has been a tough winter. Scott, one of the problems that we had talked about that we were putting out to bid for highway was the Francis Drive project. Yes. And we're going to rebid that, correct? Yes, we are. We're going to add an addendum to add another little drainage project that's been on our to-do list. And, okay. Uh, we're going to put that back out. So that should be going out hopefully in, in the next in week, week or two. two. Yeah. Good, 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 good. Yeah, we have a lot of highway projects to do. Um, and I have to check with Dennis, Peter, if you want, I'll give you a buzz and maybe in a couple weeks we, you and I will sit down with Dennis and discuss uh, our paving, how many roads we paved today, what the cost has been, and what else has he got on his wish list. One of the best things we've done, I think, was to uh, sub out our paving. It, it's really been cost effective and it allows us to use our regular crew on other projects such as patching and fishing and catch basin. So, uh, it is a good thing, but we'll, we have. I told Dennis in June we'd sit down and talk again, so I'll set something yeah. up in the next week or two. Sounds you good. Yeah. All righty, sounds good, Councilman Delisandro. Well, planning and zoning. Planning's very busy. Busy time of year now. Um, a lot of applications. Mm -hmm. Our professionals do a great job. Good. Our volunteers also. Um, a lot of people calling about several projects, a lot of concerns. Mm -hmm. um, also, I've been wondering if maybe we could look into getting some other training sessions for our uh, boards, because every year they have to have a certain so amount hours, of hours yeah. required. So okay. maybe we could look into getting something brought here instead yeah. of them going Tom, out. Tom, we had talked about possibly doing an in-house training here. Would you? Yeah, we did one a few years ago. We could do yeah. it again. Uh, yeah, if you want. Because a lot of the courses that are available outside are really like on one subject. They're like yeah. on wetland issue or something. It doesn't give them a cohesive overview of the process and everything yeah. else for both courts. Yeah. Right. So if we could put something like that you, together. Last time I think Michelle did part of it. I did. And yeah. I forget. No, I think that'd be a good idea. That'd be good. 
And so. um, are we going to have a joint meeting for the dome with the planning board? Yeah, we will at some point when we get the application okay. and get still further down the road. We okay. have a joint public hearing on that project. So okay. we'll see how that goes. Excited for yeah. the dome project. Yeah, I think so. it's a great yes. project. Yeah. Um, I have to ask a question. Councilman uh, Marinero, I, I saw you at a planning board meeting, I think. I was watching television channel 22 last week. And one of the people that got up and spoke had said that they named the names of the people in the Hilltop Manor project. Are you involved with that project? Uh, my brother is, yeah, okay. I'm a part owner. Okay. Been, uh, part owner for about 12 years. Okay, but you're a part, you're part owner? Yes. Okay. And the only thing I would ask is I think that there should be some kind of disclosure, I think, that actually if you would speak with the attorney. Because when you come to a planning board meeting, um, obviously we point the planning board so it would be a little um, sensitive to that. You know what I mean? If that's a project that you're involved in, and I think there should be some kind of disclosure to say, you know, this is a project that I'm involved with, so everybody knows. So I, I don't know. I have, uh, I have routinely now, since I've been a member of the board, attending quite a few of the uh, planning boards. Mm -hmm. It's very uh, uh, educational. Mm -hmm. There's oh, a yeah. lot to learn. Yeah. I, uh, I attended uh, because of the dome project, another project going on. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah. I plan on attending those mm -hmm. more regularly and some of the other board meetings. So, okay. I typically watch them on television myself. Well, it, it's good because I see the interaction. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, uh, uh, I would like to see uh, more uh, people on the board ask uh, questions. I see that they rely a lot on, on, uh, on the uh, help that we have. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that we, we had discussed about streamlining and uh, still we require the hard books. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering how many of those board members really review those hard books because it's extremely expensive to the people that are doing these projects. While the state accepts a CD, our board still accepts the hard books. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I spoke to Michelle, and she said it was going to be a good idea. She actually didn't know that every time that uh, uh, new information has to go in the book, mm -hmm. actually our town board requires a new book to be printed. Mm -hmm. So streamlining, that will be another way of reducing costs to the companies. Mm -hmm. And that's something that, you know, okay. I, I learned as, uh, as I attend these meetings. Okay. So. No, that's fine. And obviously, um, you know, as a town board member, you're more than welcome to attend these meetings. I just a little bit concerned with, like I say, we appoint the people on the board and you would have a project before the board. And I would not want the board to feel any undue pressure or anything like that. And I, that's why I think that disclosure. I have, not discussed, uh, yeah. I have not discussed with any board members any project, okay. especially that project over there, okay. with any of the board members. Uh, I would not dare to do that. Okay. I would allow the board to do their diligent work. Okay. But at the same time, I think I'm entitled to attend. Oh, absolutely. It's not only that project goes on yeah. on the agenda. Uh, there is quite a few projects. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. But if you feel that yeah. more comfortable that I don't attend when that project goes on, maybe. Uh, I won't you know, I, I, it's not a, for me to say. I was just surprised. I just think that you know, as as, as part of. Uh, discussion that it would be something that they should know and you know you kind of kind of insulate yourself from that so but that's certainly up to you that's your decision so okay great thank you thanks um councilman franco yes uh the last um, do we have any more recreation to talk yes, about we do we do there's a few things real quick uh the last uh, rec advisory board meeting we had a presentation from a member of our planning board actually uh craig okay I, his last name escapes me oh yeah uh, craig smith also, yes yeah. yes, yes. He's also a uh, John Jay hockey coach. Oh, he's big in hockey. Yes, yep. he is. And he presented to us a, the most fascinating product I've ever seen. It's a synthetic ice surface that he would like uh, the town to look at eventually. And maybe we can put it on top of or replace the surface at the roller rink right mm -hmm. now. Now this surface is, it comes like in three by three sheets, I believe. And it's white like ice. You piece it together and you can ice skate on it. That's cool. It's the most amazing. I, I had to say it. it was, he showed us the YouTube video. It has a 20 year shelf life. You can do inside, outside, doesn't matter. So it's um, really? something that he's going to look more into. We asked him to, especially the price. Wow. And um, 
from what I understand, talking to Bill Green about it, the surface at the roller rink mm -hmm. was fairly expensive. Mm -hmm. So if we could sell that, maybe that could offset the okay. cost. Okay. Something that definitely look into because that would open it up. You could also rollerblade on it. You can figure skate on it. You can play hockey. Wow. Regular skating. It's a Very well, interesting. fascinating product. We could maybe repurpose that to a basketball court. You can play basketball court. Uh, on that believe, on that surface, I believe. So we would take right. that surface off of there and repurpose Maybe use it that lime or elsewhere, or we have a basketball mm -hmm. here. I'll check with the manufacturer. Okay. We might be able to just repurpose it. Wow, that, that's a very interesting. Okay. Less yeah. impact if you fall, you know that kind right. of thing. Right. That would yeah. be a good. Yeah, that's good. Idea. And uh, one other thing, but I just want to Tommy, just oh, sure. back to that one minute. I'd like to say I know Craig was very big. I don't. They went to the Nationals, I think, or the hockey yeah, team John, a couple of years ago. Yeah, John, I understand John Jay has one of the best um, hockey programs in the state. I was shocked when I found out how good they were, and mm -hmm. they did a great job. And Craig's with the traveling with the team and all that. Now, the roller hockey, we put a lot of money into roller hockey a few years ago because that was a very popular sport. Right, those numbers are, are dropping. But they, more, they seem to have gone down, and when I walk my dog, I'll see that very few, um, doesn't seem like there's any organized really roller hockey in there, and sometimes I see people without even skates on they're just you know hitting a hockey puck or something like that so mm -hmm. I think that's a pretty interesting idea yeah, once really we get neat. the cost and see what it co would see what the you know see mm -hmm. what the what it would be so, okay uh, one other thing I just want to mention real quick um, this morning I was watching television and I'm uh, watching the news and I hear um, off-duty police officer John Vessio and I looked up and as I don't know if you all know but John Vessio was our former rec advisory board chair and he was pumping gas one morning, and out of nowhere, I think it's off the Hutchinson you know, Park. He's not the one to pull the guy out yeah, of the car. Yeah. Oh, no. You see the video, the guy goes really? wailing into the gas. Cars are engulfed in flames. Ooh, he moves back, goes back into the flames, yep. and rescues yeah. the guy, pulls the guy out. Oh, I'll be darned. It was I saw amazing. that this morning. Yeah, so, um, so that was that John Vessio. Yeah, that was our John Vessio. Wow, so wow, that's amazing. I just amazing. wanted to recognize yeah. him. Absolutely. Nice to see a local guy. Uh, Lieutenant Vessio, I believe, was he um, a lieutenant? Or maybe, maybe you might have gotten... Senior investigator. Senior investigator yeah. Vessio, because you have to keep these things proper. Yeah, but yes, yes, senior yeah. investigator no, but Vessio. Congratulations to him. It was John's quite a, a heroic act. Yeah, John's a great guy, and uh, he's always been terrific. So mm -hmm. thank you, John, for, for doing what you do. Great guy. Wow, that's very impressive. Yeah, I saw that. Neat. I didn't know that was John Vessio. Very cool. All right, and that brings it to me. Obviously, oh, 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 I'm sorry, Manny. I didn't, I didn't have my glasses on there. Oh, there you go, Manny. Now you can speak. Yeah. Uh, before I uh, give you my report for the Osai Lake, uh, I did a lot of uh, research with the help of our, uh, our uh, assistant and Mark as far as lime kill. I think. Uh, the rest of the board does all the, the numbers. Uh, the facility in the last, I, I only did the last couple of years, it's costing more to the town taxpayers than what the facility is actually bringing in. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how the rest of the board feels about this. A couple of us come from the private, and I don't think we could run a facility in the red I don't know how Mr. D'Alessandro and Mr. Cassidy feel about this, uh, but definitely we should look in ways to, to do something about that. We're talking about $80,000 in the red every year. Uh, just one thing I know that that doesn't reflect IBM's uh, consideration of $18,000 per year, so that'd be 8,000 minus 18,000. So you'd be talking $62,000 a year. I'm sorry, could you repeat that, John? Sure. When we purchased the facility, it was uh, assessed, it was appraised at about a million dollars. We purchased it for $500,000. Right. IBM is, technically, uh, we have a schedule of payments for the next 20 or 25 years of that, of that remainder, the $500,000, whatever, is uh, actually credited uh, $18,000 per year at the end of the 20 or 25 years. I'll have to take a look at the contract. So basically, IBM subsidizes that for $18,000 a year. Right. Still, so we accounted for about $62,000 a year yeah. that the taxpayers are uh, put into this facility. I mean, again, in the private world, 
something like this could not be sustained for a longer period of time. And considering what Mark has said before, we need to consider saving, saving. I think this would be uh, quite a bit of saving every year. Mm -hmm. uh, when revenue is not coming in, the other side of the coin is to look at uh, expenditures. So mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how you guys feel about this. Uh, well, the I have some feel. suggestion, but I would like to hear from everybody else. How I feel is it's, it's, it's part of a service that we give for recreation. We have a million dollars that we give to recreate. Where, where, where do we get the money for that? A million, forget 62,000. We have a million dollars from all the, our residents that pay their taxes. A million dollars goes every year to the benefit for the recreation of this town. So, uh, yeah, and I agree that it's not bringing in the right amount. Of, I'm not disagreeing with you. But what about the million dollars? Uh, recreation, <laughs> recreation is for the children. So is this. Well, it's, for really. the, well, it's for the seniors really. also. We have seniors that go there for the kids, for adults. Again, we do have facilities in our community that do this kind of work. The private does it mm -hmm. very well. I don't think it's this building at this time costing us money. It's not. Going through the years, it's going to keep on going like this. I mean, it's well, just we something that should be addressed. I don't know. Again, mm -hmm. if you guys want to keep it open, I'm just thinking, highlighting that we have a cost that is not being addressed, and uh, probably we should find a ways to still, if you want to keep this place open, maybe privatize it mm -hmm. and let somebody else run it. Uh, I don't know. I don't, I, don't know is, we, uh, I don't know whether legally. I don't know whether we could really do that, but I do. Um, I was actually in recreation when Mark brought the numbers up and Janet, and we're going over. But I think one thing we got to do, um, because I personally don't think, when you look at the numbers, a lot of people know about it mm -hmm. and know what is actually there. So the guy over there in that booth doesn't know it yet. But we're going to send him over to do a show with Nick. Yep. And Nick's going to be on a treadmill, so make sure you catch that show. <laughs> <laughs> and Frank will be sitting there with a glass of water watching him. Um, but yeah. we got to do a show on that so people can find out what's over there and what they are spending money on. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it was a great idea. I think the overall thing is a good idea. Yes, I don't think... Uh, the only way we're going to get the AAA rating on that is if we can start printing our own money like the federal government. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think we've got to let more people know what's over there all throughout recreation, not just the fields that were over here, Red Wing, the TV show we did a couple weeks ago. Um, I'd like to see a show done over there, and I'm not going over to do it because yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to run on the treadmill. Mm -hmm. Being in the private. Uh, for how long can you run a business like this? Not very long. And bringing money home and putting money in the business. Oh, I, I agree with you 100%. No, we can't so afford to lose seventy, eighty thousand dollars 80000 a year savings are not important to us. Oh, I agree, but I don't think we're paying, is, I think we're paying zero is. on advertising on that right I now. I go though. to the gym, right. okay? I use a facility that pay $10 a month. You cannot compare that facility to this one over here. Mm -hmm. I don't so know. We could bring Nick with the cameras over there. And see if we increase business. I think again, I don't think we should be in business to increase business. We should. We're already providing a lot of stuff. Yeah. Uh, when the taxpayers have to pay extra for a facility that is not being uh, overused by the oh. locals, yeah. now you want to again, you want to advertise. Fine. We'll come back with this and oh, yeah. see what happens. I mean, uh, Few months from now. I guess we could say that about any yeah. recreation well, that look at how about families that don't have children that don't use any recreation they're still paying mm. for um, it right what is a community I'm center the big rack or, what, what is or all the other guys, facilities uh, you guys are okay it's fine I just wanted to no bring no no attention. I mean you 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 put it out like that and don't say you know like that we don't care I mean I think we understand that we nobody wants to leave seventy sixty two thousand dollars on the table uh, we are going to do a couple of things. Uh, one of the things, one of the big issues, I think, was energy. We're going to be putting some money into the A-frame to try to tighten that up so we don't have the energy costs uh, next year. Uh, the community center, I don't know what that costs. Actually, I think the community center costs us more to operate per year 
than lime kiln. I don't know if we would consider closing down the community center because, you know, these are facilities that serve a purpose. They serve the public. If the board feels that maybe lime kiln uh, should be John, run. I may stop you there. The seniors mm -hmm. have a facility. The seniors are the seniors. And no other facility is there for the seniors where they could go for a few bucks and spend the day in a building. And, you know, if we cannot take care of our seniors and we're putting the seniors on the same level to a facility that is underused, mm -hmm. my point is that this facility is underused. We're wasting taxpayers' dollars. I just want to point that out. I mean, okay, and, and I, I, we cannot compare anything else that goes in the town to this type of facility over here. Well, I, 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 I respectfully disagree when I say that, and I'm talking about the community center, which is used by other entities besides seniors it's not just seniors we love the seniors but there's other groups that also use the community center um, and I don't think that that even breaks even so this is I agree with Councilman D'Alessandro that this is a service we provide if it feels if the board feels like it's time to shut down the gym and close it up I mean I'd have no problem but I think that we could look that as with the other issues that we have going down the road trying to lower the, the uh, bills for the energy try to save some money on the heat in the winter time. Uh, over time, we're gonna be raising the fees to make it more of a break even. I know that you pay $10 a, a month to go to a gym. Okay, so then we really can't raise it more than $10 a month because then and you're again, not gonna get again, anybody to go there. And again, these people use the latest technology, mm -hmm. the machines, the air conditioning, lighting, showers, mm -hmm. uh, and it's machines available, all, you know, again, we have these facilities in our community, and I think that the private is doing a great job. Mm -hmm. Now, do we want to overdo? I mean, the numbers are there in black and white. I only took two months of two years. And, the, and the, we see that we are overpaying for a service that is underused. That is all I'm saying. Okay. Well, I, I would like to interject. I agree that it is underused, and we do have to increase the enrollment there. That would be nice. But also, and I think Scott had mentioned it earlier, there needs to be some upgrades. So we have to look down the road with that. And this is only, how old? Maybe three years old? Two, three years three, old? Three, four years old, yeah. we bought, yeah. Uh, but we do have to take it. It's in very bad shape. I don't know if it, you've been No, I, I've been there. I'm a member. And it's, uh, it's not in, in the greatest of shape, but it does need work. But there are a lot of people that do use it, not necessarily on the inside, but also on the outside. And there are seniors that go there as well. Well, I was just talking it. about the building inside. I wasn't mm -hmm. talking about the outside facility. The building inside is costing us money, and it's underused. Uh, aside from that, Ilsa Lake, um, there is not much going on. Uh, the Ilsa Lake Advisory Board, I know I gave, uh, I passed around uh, uh, that the board, the advisory board would like to change something on, the, on, the, uh, on our website. Uh, they asked me if anytime soon they could have the new, uh, the new post put on the website. I know I brought it back. I brought it to you guys. I gave it to you guys last uh, discussion meeting. So they asking me when can they have that? Are there any questions about that? I mean, any? Oh, I would just like say so you sent out an email on that. I think no, two no, weeks I gave, ago. I gave no, no, but you, yes, no, we received that. I believe you sent out an email to the board last week about that. Correct? No. You didn't send us an email. If I go it on my computer. A couple of weeks ago. A couple weeks ago. Last, not last week, yeah, a couple weeks ago. Two weeks ago. A reminder mm -hmm. that they asked me, and tonight again, I'm, I'm asking again. So. Okay. I don't know if we have to put a resolution out. Well, I just question this. about, you know, this is Hillside Lake, then what about, say, Wikipedia? Were they going to want something on the website for, say, Wikipedia? I don't know if this would be something that actually we, we put a site up there for Hillside Lake for town issues because of the uh, interest in all the uh, documents that we have. But do we put this on for Hillside Lake? Then do we do it for, say, Wikipedia? Do we do it for the old Hopewell clean water? You know what I mean? Where does it is? And I, I just like to are, see what the I board think we feels. Really have something for Hillside Lake. Yes, we have all their documents. Yeah, it's all the towns. Words. Yeah. So if we don't agree, we might as well let them know through me or we, let, we tell them that it can't be done or it could be mm -hmm. done. And we give him a reason why. That is all. Okay. 
Not for everybody want to give it some thought. My concern is if you're going to do this for, for one group, then you're going to be doing it for, like I said, say Wikipedia or another group or something like that. But uh, if the board wants to email Councilman Marinero, uh, let us know. Thank you. All right. Um, Tom, me. Now to me. Well, actually, what happened was Tom, Tom was talking about uh, sen more. Senior Investigator Vessio. And because I'm liaison to the police department, I was thinking of police. And I would just like to say, you know, we have a report from our police department. Uh, just some things. There have been, you know, a few burglaries that our detectives are working on, uh, perch snatch snatching and stuff. Uh, we have some of our members of our police department working with the drug task force doing a very good job. And there was a, a big bust last week in Fishkill. Uh, one of the people that, one of the, uh, the suspects is actually a Hopewell Junction resident. So I'd like to say that our police department's doing a great job. They're very good. And just on a personal note, about a week and a half ago, I got a call from a lady I go to church with, uh, elderly lady, she's in her mid 70s, and her son, who's mentally disabled, didn't show up to work that day. Now he lives, he does, they don't live together. She has another house and he's at the old house and she couldn't locate him. And she called me about 10 o'clock at night and I called this place where he works. I talked to the lady and finally found out he never clocked in. It was kind of a, you know, what happened here? Um, I called our police department and uh, Sergeant Fields was on. I explained to him the situation. He sent an officer up to the house and then they did some investigating, find out he had a heart attack at the bank before he's, he's on his way to work and he ended up being in, in uh, St. Luke's Hospital. So uh, he's doing okay. He, they put, actually it put him in a coma. They had to induce a coma. So there was no way he could tell anybody who to contact. So it was really kind of a mystery. But I'd like to thank our police department. Uh, I'm sure any police department would do that, but I got to tell you what, I think uh, our police department is very good and I appreciate them because I was able to call her back, tell her where her son was and she could go, go see him the next day. So. Uh, they do a very good job, and uh, and that's about it. Very busy town, very busy police department. Yeah. Um, I think that's about it for tonight. The next town board meeting will be June 26th. And uh, Councilman? Yes. Yeah, I had one more. Uh, I don't know if you mentioned this earlier, but the Bells of Liberty are hosting a Flag Day ceremony uh. at our fire district headquarters on Route 52. This Saturday is Flag Day, and that starts at 10 a.m. Good point. Glad you remind me that it's Flag Day on Saturday because we also have a ceremony in the back here. We have a burning pit and uh, our Veterans of Foreign Wars and Manny Bacon Post actually does the ceremony also. And that's at 7 o'clock Saturday evening, so thank you for bringing that up. Flag Day is Saturday. And uh, I tell you, I went to a flag ceremony um, last weekend at the Elks and the Boy Scouts uh, out on uh, Wappingers out on 376, uh, Troop 2609. And what a touching ceremony when they talk about the flag, how it came to be, and what it stands for. It was just, it was just, it was terrific. So uh, if you have a flag, we retire them the proper way with dignity, and we will be doing that this Saturday. So thank you very much, Councilman, for, for bringing that up. All right, um, if there's nothing else on the agenda, next town board meeting will be on the 26th. Anybody else have anything to say? Are we good? Well, then thank you very much for coming. Sorry, Peter. Can't say